Here we are on episode 104 of the Trash Talk Business Podcast. We have officially made it two years of podcasting in the greater American region of the capitalistic society. You're welcome, America. I'm Andy Wines. He is Casey Bubba Lawrence. This is your weekly opportunity to build your junk removal dream, whether you're in the demolition, deconstruction, junk removal, hauling trash, picking up cans on the side of the road, running in between the raindrops to pick up trash bags, wherever they may be, you've come to the right place. He's Casey. I'm Mandy. I already said that. Casey, look at you. Look at you in studio. It took us two years to have two people in the same shot. No big deal. <laughs> Casey, what are we talking about today? Well, today I uh, actually have a special guest. So special. he's not only a previous customer of mine, but he was my biggest flex. consistent customer. Okay. In the junk rule world. And his name is Easton Makus of Makus Custom Homes. That's it. That's this is the part where you interview him. Yeah, yeah. No, I got you. Yeah, oh, yeah, no, yeah. This is the, yeah, yeah so, man. You do the interviewing part. I, I'm, well, I, you're the I'll commentary. You. I'm the you. color. That's... So I'll tell you, Makus and I met in 2016. <laughs> yep. He was building in the same neighborhood that my mom was living in. And as you know, That's we nice started the business out of my mom's kitchen. Yeah, nice neighborhood. So, Not. A yeah. lot nicer than my kitchen. Let's uh let's yeah, not a bad not a bad neighborhood. Actually, um, Eason, would you like to tell everyone how we met? Absolutely. Okay. So my name's Easton Makus. Our company's based out of Grapevine, Texas, northeast Tarrant County for any Texans listening, which is right by the airport. So that consists of Grapevine, Colleyville, South Lake, West Lake, that whole corridor. We got a family business. Um, my grandpa was in this line of work, custom home building and uh, smaller developments in Irving, Texas, back in the 60s and 70s. The 80s, my dad uh, came on board and and kind of um, it took it to uh, a different level and uh, moved out to the South Lake, Texas area in the late 80s, early 90s. And so a lot of our trades and vendors are guys that, you know, there's a lot of loyalty, family businesses, our business is family. And we had a trash guy that we had used for years and years and years, and he was getting up there in age and um, frankly was, you know, the work was not probably as detailed as it should have been, but just because of the loyalty factor and the longstanding relationship, you know, we weren't looking to make a change. But in that neighborhood that Casey's describing, we also did the development itself. So we weren't just home building, but at the end of the development phase, when the, the contractors move out of the development phase, there's a lot of piles of rubble, which would be silt fence, metal scraps, pipe scraps, dirt, debris, rock, aggregate, chunks of concrete. And there was a pile of that sitting on a vacant lot, which was kind of an eyesore, but it had been sitting there kind of at the back of the neighborhood. And I kept seeing this, uh, call it, I can't remember exactly what the sign said, but it was a camo J dog sign mm -hmm. and it kept appearing at the top of this pile of trash, which was about <laughs> six, eight feet tall. So you would have to get out of your truck, climb up this pile of garbage, put a sign in it, like a, you know, a small mountain. And I was like, you know what? That's, that's pretty damn good. So I don't know who's putting this sign there, but it had a number on it. And, uh, this was going on for months, but I was like, you know, good on these people. <laughs> Anyways, called the sign. Long story short, which I've already made it long, uh, got a hold of Casey, and um, you know his personality shines through. We actually, I think, we've become friends over the years. But he was my go-to, so it turned into a guy on a skid steer that, at best, would kind of take a push broom, sweep it into his bucket from the garage to during our construction cleanups, getting you know two-story house swept from top to bottom out that garage, mm -hmm. corners, nooks, and crannies all from that uh, sign being on that pile of junk in that neighborhood. And it wasn't just that. That sign, by the way, everyone listening who, who, who shit on yard signs, that, that $4 yard sign, all right, yep. turned into I, a consistent. Hey, I, I, here's the deal. I don't, I don't shit on them. It's no, no, I'm not saying you do, but oh, there's okay. people out there that shit on them because they're like, oh, they don't right. work. You have, to, you have to keep replacing them. Okay, cool. Let's just say I use 10 yard signs. Let's just, let's just do that. Well, that's 40 bucks. And what it got me was a loyal long time repeat customer. So years and years of, of business. I mean, from 2016 to 2022, um, that's how I got this guy in. I, I literally just put a sign on his 
trash piles of, hey, your shit's dirty. You need to call us. Yeah. I mean, you, you, you met the customer at their greatest moment of need, right? There was no convincing. They already pre-qualified because they had a pile. That's it. Mm-hmm. So ain't no shame in that game. Um, and I would say for the trash business, but one of the most effective um, things for our business too, we call them bandit signs. Mm-hmm. And on the weekends when cities aren't driving around, um, I, I would highly encourage that. I mean, in the day, the day and age of the internet, podcasts, which we're on right now, um, social media, um, our our small little business i would like to say we get a lot of exposure and a lot of name requisite recognition from the bandit signs that we put out over the weekend as well so trash business other businesses if you can figure out a way effectively do that on uh, routes and places that you might um get i i would i would encourage that especially for the money that you spend on them even if they get picked up or put away and obviously do it in a respectful manner not to make anybody mad but um, yeah. that, that, that sign in that pile of trash was super, super effective. Yeah. My, uh, my concern is that, they, um, especially in our area, I think they, they, they like, I'm all about respite, you know, recycling and being responsible. I look at yard signs as that. The other thing that's it's interesting is I can tell how my competition is doing based on when I see yard signs, like all of a sudden, like I, I know they're having a slow week because that's when they do yard signs. Um, because it's an afterthought, right? And I also see people in the junk and groups where it's like, they'll be like, yep, I, I do, you know, two hours a week. Or this one guy put out like 100 yard signs or 80 yard signs in one night in like a six hour period. It was bin, bin, binge listening to our, our uh, podcast. So it's like, it, for me, whatever marketing you're doing, like the key is consistency. Um, the strategy there too. Yeah. Well, correct. I mean, right. Yeah, great. Yeah, you either blank in an area. Yeah. No, I have, I, when I did yard signs, I had three strategies behind them. Um, and, and yet, none of them were consistent on. I mean, that's that. At the end of the day, we as an organization are not consistent on yard signs. So that is uh, well, I mean, it is what it is. And, and I think the the funny thing was is the type of customer that it brought in is the customer that sees it consistently, and they're like, you know what, I have a lot of opportunities for this service. And in his case, he, you know, like you said, he's a developer and a builder. So yeah. you know, he had different properties that were having houses being built on them. So it's a solution that's being brought to his attention. Um, a, a lot of people have asked us before, Andy, about construction, getting into the construction business and as a, as a trash company or as a junk removal company. And I've yeah. always stuck by this, but I tell them the reason it worked for me is because I had the opportunity to be picky. And I worked with builders that mainly dealt in cost plus types of builds yep. because I wasn't going to sacrifice um, our prices when we had the best quality just to get business. When well, you, 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 you're correct. You, I mean, it was really simple math. You aligned, yeah. you, you aligned a second customer that had, or a set, you, you aligned a GC or, or whatever, right. A business yeah. that had a shared customer base, right. You guys both are looking for customers. <coughs> They're willing to spend <coughs> extra um, to get extra. What is Taylor doing? Taylor, are you messing with the background? Oh, no. Taylor? That's weird. That's I don't like before. that. I don't like that at all. That was, that was twitchy. It looked like a lava lamp. It got me <laughs> fucking weird. I do want to share something for shits and giggles. Um, now though, your 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 mom is no longer living there, and I'm no longer living where I'm living. Um, oh, did you get the address? I, I know, I got it. I got it. I want to show because we talked about uh, starting businesses out of our houses. So I want to share share with the listeners the house that I started in, uh, where I I uh, I shared. Okay, so this is our my old house. Uh, so this so of this house you. here. What'd you say? Am I call you out? You, you're gonna, you're gonna call me out. 100%. So this is the house that I started the business in. Hell, that might be still my barrel. This garage here, 700 square foot garage. Here's th- This looks like he has a burn pit. Our burn pit was in the farther back. Big old pile. Th- we had a wood pile over here. Look, he still has some wood laying around. That was is our, that, the piano, our, that is the piano house. Yeah, that was the piano, piano house. Part. Anyways, yeah. And all this, where this grass is, that was all yeah. gravel. So this was, so here's, here's employee parking. And then trucks were staged back here. And uh, scrap was in this corner. My mom's old house, uh-huh. right? Oh yeah, dude, I have your mom's old house. We, we, we're doing that next, anyways. So yeah. these are these are our humble beginnings, right? And then Casey, on the other hand, lived in an <laughs> HOA, right? Um, <laughs> slightly different. Hundred percent. Oh, here now. Oh, hold on. I gotta re-add it to the stage. I don't know how the fucking internet works. Hold on. Now I gotta add this one. Oh, I already started playing around with it. I, let me see if I gotta add. Stop share. I gotta stop share. I gotta re-share. See technology. 
Not my jam. Hold on. Here we go. Morning star. The old morning star. Here we go. Yeah, the old morning star court, man. All right, here we go. Okay. So now you can see <laughs> slightly That's different. Right. I mean, this is they, they, they had a gated house within the gated community, right? So all their trucks yeah. were back here. So when I, when Which I visited, was a pain in the ass get their trailers backed up around. Oh, that, yeah. In, yeah, yeah, no, yeah, 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 yeah. Nice little. Gonna say, private, you know, yeah. Let's, uh... <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was, Andy it was nice. culture there. That's what we call a porta cachere. Oh, my yeah. gosh. We ain't, we ain't gonna that's, fuck that's Casey, I, yeah, that's Casey. Yeah, that's Casey's double Let me tell you something. I ain't got no porta share or no fucking culture, apparently. So that's, I know what? that ain't how I fucking, I don't know if y'all met. Uh, in this met me show before. right now. Let me tell you something. Look at this. Oh, you know what? You got everything, but you do have a swimming pool. Is that a pool? What is that? Yes, that was a pool. Oh my god. Yeah, yeah, we're, we're a swimming pool. We had a we had a burn pit for pianos. Casey had a fucking swimming pool. So Here. point is I just sent right? you the address I actually grew up in. This was I like wanna... I was 25, started my first business. You're welcome. Oh my god. Now now we're now we're now we're jumping all over the place. My point is, yeah, right, with ahead. enough ambition, you too can. Can can start your junk removal company anywhere you want. All right, so you got a standard ass, regular ass house. That you ain't this oh, one right here. Nice. Got a new roof. There we go. Look at that little little overhang. No big deal. Look at this. Oh my god, look. That's, that's prime nice, picking man. right there. That's that's a two item pickup right there, Jack. Yeah, a little construction man. debris. Sorry, Fiberglass tub. No big that's deal. Crazy. There <laughs> we go. We could pick all the houses in Texas, and we found the one that had a two two cubic yard pickup right there. That's a yeah. That's a learning lesson. That's a learning lesson right there. There you go. Uh, Texas, so, y'all, y'all love Texas. All right, now I'm done playing around. So, all I, right, I know a question we get a lot is, is you know, getting in the construction, getting in the home builder space, and you have production builders, and custom builders. Yep. I only worked with custom home builders mm -hmm. because they could afford our prices. And Easton will tell you, I wasn't the cheapest. I mean, by far, probably. Um, you know, I had the highest labor but also paid my guys more than any other trash company in the industry in my area. Um, but yeah. my quality was unbeaten and it showed because other custom home builders that would work with Eason or even compete. I mean, you can call them competitors or not. They actually, I mean, they build on the same properties, but they started to me too. Cause they're like, Hey, make is using this company and they're damn good. I want to use that company. Yeah. And then I actually would ask this guy, who can you refer me to that I could do work with? And he would do it like the Mitchell, yeah. like the Mitchell's, yep. right? A lot of Mitchell construction. I mean, a lot of, a lot of job, jobs for him and they did commercial work, but they went to school together. And a lot of people think that, you know, clients will be stingy or they don't want to give away their secret. But in the builder world that I've known, they share a lot of great resources. And I was one of them. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, and a so lot what's of times you is... find a builder. Okay. Sorry, oh, go, Andy. Go, go, ahead. go ahead. Go ahead, Easton. Go ahead, Easton. We well, I was going to say, kind of later. piggyback on what Casey was saying, is I'm not going to – the builder circles that, you know, that are talking to you, I mean, there's, you know, let's say 200 builders in our area, but the circle that I communicate with or, you know, we'll see each other and cross paths around town, typically those are the builders I respect and that feeling's mutual. So – I know they pay their guys, they pay their vendors. And so I'm not going to offload or recommend uh, a couple of the numbers to Casey or the, the trash company XYZ, you know, some Johnny come lately that doesn't pay his bills or, or somebody, it's going to be typically somebody that's going to be established. Um, and somebody that, you know, has high quality work and, and something else that, you know, we might get into this, but I heard this yesterday, so I'm going to steal it. And I think it was pretty cool. It stuck with me. But at Palm Sunday yesterday, our pastor had said, you know, it was talking about interviewing for a different job, corporate corporate level job, some some shit like that. Not not building industry, blue collar work. But this this interviewer said this guy had come in and talked about his college degree and things like that. And he said, well, you know, we only hire MBAs. Well, what this guy was saying is MBA. He was saying that's a mop and bucket attitude. So <laughs> what I would say I for a trash company. Put that, put that down, Taylor. Write that down. Mop. Yeah. <laughs> mop and bucket attitude. Mop and, and, I, and bucket attitude. Yep. Write that so down for me, Barry Scott. That. 
to the trash business. Yeah. That mop and bucket attitude would be, you know, talking about the bandit signs, $40. You could get on Facebook Marketplace, go to Lowe's and Home Depot and get a weed whacker for, you know, battery powered weed whacker for 50 bucks, 100 bucks, whatever it is. Or you yeah. probably already have one as it is as a trash company. I would say if you're trying to get in with somebody, that mop and bucket attitude would be, you know, hey, go over there, not even ask the builder. Hey, we picked up this pile of debris on the curb, you know, and they've got silt fence or, mm -hmm. you know, this is just new construction relating. A lot of these scenarios wouldn't play out in typical trash stuff. But as a home builder, up a gun, the, the, uh, the curb appeal of the house, even if it's already sold, that client's going to come look at that house. So a lot of times construction cleanup is scheduled strategically prior to the weekend. So the house looks nice for a client that's oh, yeah. going to go in. So yep. as you're picking up the trash, bust out that weed whacker for 10 minutes and knock down some of the high weeds, snap a photo of it, text it to the builder and say, hey, we got your trash. I noticed some high weeds, so I knocked these down. It may yeah. take an extra five minutes, but that builder, that he will never forget that. Ever, yeah. ever, ever. You'd be like, damn, that was awesome. I cannot believe that guy did that. Just carry it around, um, yeah. well, you know, and just do something extra like that. That doesn't cost any extra money. And low cost, great, low cost, low cost, client. high impact, low cost, Absolutely. high impact is the difference, right? And it's it, it shows the quality. Actually, I, I talked about this with uh, this weekend. I was at a home and garden show, and we gave away pens. And the guy grabbed my pen. And he clicks it. He goes, "It's a good pen." And he grabbed our business card. He goes, "That's a really thick business card." And I'm, right, low cost, high impact. I'm going to give away pens either way. Do I give yeah. away the seventy cent pen or the ninety cent pen? 70 cent being the shitty cheap one they're going to lose or the 97 one that makes a difference, right? I'm already committed. And what you're saying is the same thing. You're already there. You're already getting paid. You already got the string trimmer. I used to sell string trimmers. So weed whacker, like skill saw or sawzall. I'm very particular about words. I wrote a book that I'll shamelessly plug right now. Words fucking matter available on Amazon and all the fine retailers like Amazon. Actually, it's only available on Amazon and anywines.com. No big deal. All right. Anyways, words fucking matter. So weed whacker was a unapproved term when I worked for uh, Black & Decker because it's a string trimmer. Oh, yeah. Uh, there. Yeah, there we go. No big deal. Just like yeah. it's not a Sawzall, it's a reciprocating saw made by, right, if it's a Milwaukee Sawzall or or is a circular saw, never a skill saw because uh, skill made the skill saw brand. I love bringing this up because it gets Casey twitchy. Uh, because yeah. we do know the words fucking matter. So yes, yeah, so your string trimmer, uh, eighty nine dollars. That's your entry level price. Buck twenty nine for the battery operated one. Uh, no big deal. Ryobi probably could buy with about a sixty nine dollar well, one. It, it, and the, Ryobi, the, point, the, the worst. Right. It, I will there. say this while 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 I'm getting twitchy. No, go ahead. For those, that's right. Soapbox. We're we're soapboxing already. Uh, right. How do I say? It? There's not a way. There's not a kind way to say this. If you're rocking Ryobi tools, you ain't fucking committed. That's it. That's the yeah. fucking word. You got to commit. No, that's, I don't, that's like a kitchen cabinet came off, bust out the Ryobi. Actually, that's Andy, let me go on a story. Let me go on a story. I'm going to go on a soapbox here too. Here's something that Casey did. So as a home builder, I'll, I'll, I'll shamelessly say when I graduated, my dad had a $150 gift card to Home Depot or a trade into Ryobi tools. So for 10 years... I carried around a Ryobi tool bag. Well, here's something that happened in the trash business. I had a demo um, and I and I called Casey and I and I said, hey, I've got a random demo. It was on an inside of a house. So a little bit more obscure. It was more of a remodel type demo, not new construction type demo. Well, he said, hey, all these cabinets are installed with square head screws. I don't have a drill on me. Could I run to Lowe's or Home Depot and pick up a drill on y'all's account? Number one, I said, hell yes. So I wouldn't have to drive over there. So he went to Lowe's. He went, picked up the drill. He called me from the checkout counter. I gave them my, gave them my Lowe's account number. Hmm. I didn't know what the hell he bought. But what he ended up buying was a DeWalt impact drill that I was probably going to return because I already had my stuff. Hmm. So I got that DeWalt drill. I have now, over the last few years, converted all my battery powered stuff to 20 volt to wall. So thanks to this guy right here, he got the job done, and he's taken me from lime green to yellow and black. So there we I'll go. Take it. You know what? And I'm a, I'm a I was raised on yellow. My father been rocking to wall since '92. I was raised right, no big deal. I even hawked him. I sold him for a couple of years. Matt Kenseth, 
winner of the Winston Cup or whatever it's fucking called. Really sprint, I think it was Sprint Cup back in 2004, maybe yeah, three, 2003. Like Matt Kenseth. Hey, Wisconsin native won the, the, uh, the Sprint Cup back in 2003. Number 17, no big deal. I had to know that actually back in the day. I had to know how Matt Kenseth was doing each week. So every Monday we'd have a conference call and the first like two minutes would be like, Matt Kenseth did do, 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 do at the NASCAR this weekend. And then I'd go into the stores where my dwell turned. They're like, hey, how was Kenseth this weekend? I'm like, I fucking, I would just regurgitate the shit I heard them say. Kind of like that's how when I bartended, um, I don't give a shit about baseball. And yet I bartended every Friday night. So every Friday night, 710, the Brewers are on, right? I mean, that's just, that's, that's baseball. That's baseball in the summer. And so every week I had to, like, I basically hear like two or three people say something like, oh yeah, they're, Pitching, pitching suck this week, or oh yeah, the bats came alive on Tuesday, and I would just say that people are like, hey, how are the Brewers? Like, man, the bats came alive on Tuesday. Fucking, <laughs> oh fucking, <laughs> <coughs> I'm dying. Choking <coughs> on right. his own word. <coughs> choking, choking. <coughs> that's a good one. Choking on his own words. Here's the deal: when you steal from one person, it's called plagiarism. When you steal from everybody, it's called research. That's true. Research accordingly. You know. Um, that. That's great, James. And, stole, and, and that's a stolen. That's a stolen. That's a stolen line. I stole that from a guy who stole it from a guy, right? Like, uh, actually, here, there's a good here. Good thing I got books laying around near me. Uh, Steal like an artist, which is a book that go. basically says nothing's original. Like he quotes a guy from 2000 BC, 4,000 years ago, a philosopher that said nothing's original. We're just all regurgitating the same shit and repackaging it. And I was like, okay, I I fuck with that. Um, and this guy here, when I got my book, I was like, hey, I want my book to have the same feeling and yeah, texture as this matte, book. So matte the matte, the matte color cover, like this, yeah, this yeah. is there's a, a parallel yeah. here, right? I read words this fucking words fucking matter. Yeah. And I it's got pictures. It's got before. pictures. Yeah. I fucking love I pictures. Okay. Unless he what do you say? Yeah. What do you say? He said he's heard that book before. I said, Well, it's his unless he stole that too. Unless you told me about it. Somebody's told me about it. Casey probably told you about it. I got no, uh, and I, I've, I've sold a few. Still, hold on, hold on. Someone just said, still waiting on my autograph copy. That's James Feltz. Oh, James Feltz. Actually, oh, here, man. breaking news, <laughs> breaking news from the former franchisee we were part of. Um, one of the franchises that wanted to get out of it for the longest time finally sold theirs. Um, and, and I will quote this person. Um, uh, well, I'll just, the last, li last line of the person's quote, I'm just glad it's over. There you go. Bottom line up front, I'm just glad it's over. This person was part of the J-Dog franchise system for a number of years. Breaking news first. Sold it, uh, I, I imagine, to some other sucker. And uh, they are glad it's over. Um, and I'm still proud was, to say, out of all the J-Dog, the you're probably Texas, the only, yeah, there's you're, only one left. And it's my old one. Who's that? Oh, really? yeah. That's the only one left in Texas? Yeah. yeah. Also, you're one of the only J Dogs that ever made money on an on a exit. Yep. So, all right, James only Feltz, I owe him a book. Exit. You know why? Because we fucking did it. We did it right. It sucked, but we did it right. Yeah, yeah. yeah you, I was say you guys sucked it up for like two years. I got pissed off one day, and that was it. I fucking called my lawyer. And we fucking cut bait, Jack. All so, right. There we go. We haven't talked shit about J Dog in a while, so it's good that we fucking got that out of yeah, our yeah, way. Yeah, um, 89% failure rate or whatever. I mean, 98, 89, depending on what you're looking at. It is the mm -hmm. worst junk roll franchise system out there. Mm -hmm. That's, that is, that is, that is me reporting the, the facts, Jack. So I do have so, a question for Easton. I want to put it out. Also there. for I, here, I just, I got to say this before I, ahead, I'm, before I, I rudely interrupt you again. Uh, uh, my, my, uh, my cousin, her son's name is Easton. It's got a, a T though, Easton. Mm -hmm. And then I call her other son Weston, even though his name's Camden. And she doesn't like it when I do that. So I call him Easton and Weston. So That's I thought a fucking ho hotel chain or some shit. You Anyways, Casey, right? back, yeah. Casey, back to you since you can't, you keep getting so rudely interrupted. Also, I don't know if it's because you're sitting next to him or the Hawaiian shirt or you're close to the camera. Your fucking guns look fire right now. Looks like you've been fucking, do dude, 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 you, you look fucking solid. Or you've been eating too much barbecue. I don't know. It's, I don't know what it is. I ate a bunch of these. Snickers. <laughs> Snickers. <laughs> Looking. What's the or, Snickers. 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 Dad bod. You want a fucking dad bod? Mm -hmm. Buy Hawaiian yeah, shirts. 
hey, you can't tone it, tan it, baby. And if you can't do either, put a right. fucking tattoo on it. That's the way. Dude, my, as soon as I put tattoos on my arms, I'm like, dude, I got some fucking arms now. No, I don't. I got yeah, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to the tattoo studio today. You should. So my question for Easton is, why why did you continue to use us once you realized we weren't the cheapest option around? Because instead of calling for a, hey, garage clean, and we're phasing it out four times, which is maybe not the best business practice from a, a builder standpoint, but a lot of our, our business and being successful is keeping our clients happy. In our, in our family business, our custom home building business, semi-custom home building business here in Dallas, Fort Worth, we hugely rely on repeat business. So calling J-Dog and saying, hey, I've got clients that are going to be, I know, have family in town for, let's say, Easter. They're going to be walking that house and picking it apart. And the fact that that house looks clean before they come in takes a lot of, I, I feel like that presents itself well. And, that, you know, these guys are, these guys are key. These guys are paying attention to the details, right? Or, hey, I would call Casey on a morning and it's, you know, my sister does our home sales. And I would say, hey, my sister just told me that she's got clients walking XYZ neighborhood at 3 p.m. today. Do you have any crews around that could go do a, a sweep, even though it's not a full load of trash or whatever? You know, I knew I'd be paying a premium for that service, but that's why I wouldn't be able to get that service elsewhere because it was always, well, I'm at another job or, well, I'm, it was, you know, one guy and uh, one helper that he was dragging his skid steer all around. And once he loaded it up, he was to the dump and then he was home for the whole day. So, you know, those those little ancillary services and, mm -hmm. you know, that MBA, that that mop and bucket attitude of, you know, it didn't always work out. But I could mm -hmm. pretty much count on it that if I needed something and I wouldn't I wouldn't exploit that or take advantage of it. But he knew if I called for that, which maybe would be once a month or once every other month, that it was important. And then they would they would do that and you it know restructure the the, restructure their schedule to help me out. And that was that was huge. It was the trust factor also because I met with him in person a couple of times. He met my guys a few times. I was very familiar with his PMs, all his project managers. So that way I didn't always have to bother the owner of the company. We could talk straight to who was who's on site what do they see what do they need right now but they were i mean easton i'll tell you right now for everyone listening i would have codes to these multi-million dollar houses i had a hundred percent full access to at any time because he trusted me hey go to this house we're wrapping up you know final clean out we just need it swept out real quick and we'll go out there with a crew and you gotta understand this thing's about this thing's closed but yet we're out there cleaning it out because he knows that we're going to do a good job and he, he doesn't have to worry about us. Um, I think that's a, another big thing that a lot of, <clears throat> a lot of uh, junk removal companies that they deal with is you got to understand you may not look trustworthy and I, and I get it. People say, Oh, it's all about how you look. It's a hundred percent about how you look. If you look shady, I'm not going to hire you. You can be the best in the world, but if you look like I can't trust you, I'm not even going to give you the time. Um, that's just one factor to it. I, in my personal opinion, one well, thing we would, that's, 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 a, that's a two way street, right? When I, when I get people that call me and sound shady on the phone, I'm not interested in working with them because, yeah. because to your point, what Easton was saying, Hey, are they going to pay me on time? Right. That's a, that's a huge consideration. Right. When I, and I tell Remember, people, when, yeah, yeah. When, when, right. When people call me on a right, Saturday right. or Sunday, right, right, right. <laughs> yeah, if I get if I get a phone call on a Saturday or Sunday, somebody in a panic, I'm like, that's someone that's got piss poor planning skills, and I don't want to inherit their problem, right? I'll I'll do the job if it makes sense. All too often, I end up taking on other people's problems because they had piss poor planning, and then mm -hmm. it's like, oh, I need the job done right away. It's like, cool, I need to get paid right away. It's like, oh, well, that's tied up. It's like, well, then mm -hmm. I, I got nothing to tell you. Now, the goal here, what you're saying, Easton, about not taking advantage of the goal is that you establish a good rapport wherein. The last minute shit is the exception. And the last minute shit is because, right, you you know you're going to get paid. You know that, you know, some, you know, have the grace that sometimes shit falls through. Um, mm -hmm. And, yeah, don't let don't let that dysfunction become your function. Yeah. You know? Well, plus you can always, you can literally credit the quick 150 clean out jobs. Like, hey, run by the real quick, sweep it out for 150 bucks. 
you can credit the multi-trailer jobs to those $150 jobs because yep. those were the the detail that he was like, man, you know what? Like, I really like these guys. The fact that they would do this and they really helped us out. I want to use them more for these bigger jobs as well. And there's times, man, where the look, the, the price didn't add up. Like, just straight up, it just didn't work out. Numbers didn't math. And it was it was fine like, on both sides. Hey, this ain't going to work for us. Okay, cool. This isn't going to work for me. Awesome. We'll get you in the next one. Um, and we found that out a couple of times. There was just certain jobs that, hey, he's like, it's just not in the budget at that price. Yep. So he he might go go somewhere else and, and use someone else for that for that one job. For your uh, trash listening audience, I'm sorry. Dude. No, you're good. I'm used to. It. I, I, I would I, work I would say this. Um, <laughs> never never having met Andy before and being on here, this would be some advice for the trash companies, right? I told Casey I have a meeting at five o'clock today, mm -hmm. right after this, just up the road, so I won't have to cut out too early. But this is a guy. And I'm sure everybody knows this, that turf, everybody wants turf here in Texas, you know, with water restrictions and things like that. So turf and turfing yards has kind of become commoditized like the trash mm. business. Mm -hmm. So I would say this, if you're listening to this podcast, to Andy and to Casey, that's something that I notice as I'm sitting here in the midst of this is their energy. So you talked about, you know, somebody's appearance and things like that. I don't care what it is. I would say tattoos, mohawk, Hispanic, doesn't speak good English. It doesn't matter. The, the energy, positivity, I know this is a business and we talk costs and we talk numbers and things like that from a building business. But, and I'm not, I'm not saying this to blow smoke up their ass. I'm telling them that that is why these guys have been successful in what they've done. So I would ask you as a trash business, if you are going out and trying to drum up business, even if you've got to turn it on and it's not your personality for five minutes when you meet somebody, be nice, be energetic, <laughs> yeah. be well, smile, as, as cheesy as it sounds, smile. You're in the trash business. These guys deal with blue collar workers with chips on their shoulders all the time. And that's okay. As you get to know each other and there's a rapport built, like Andy mentioned that word earlier, you're having bad days. That's fine. You can let that shine through. But when you're initially trying to get somebody's business, go out of your way, look at yourself, look at that phone call. How many rings does it take to pick up? Or when you call back, don't sound put out sound. <laughs> hey, how can I help you? You know, I'm so, so, even if you can't get there that day, say, I am so sorry, but I'll put it on the first run tomorrow or something. Those little actions say more than the answer you're actually giving just the way you sound or the attitude that you put off. That means a lot. And it, it may not mean a lot to everybody, but it sure as shit meant a lot to me. Well, uh, confidence is contagious, right? At the end of the day, I was, I was talking to, um, I was actually talking to a close friend of mine today about, where you are in this world, right? There, thirteen point nine percent of of uh, workers in the United States are blue collar. Like I was raised on blue collar. My my great my my great grandparents both lived in trailers. Like I I know where I come from. And I'm fucking confident. And I'm proud of it. One of my other grandfathers he hauled scrap and trash in the, in the, you know in the middle of the Great Depression until the nineteen until nineteen fifty nine his is his passing. You know it's like so when I talk to people about going to you know whenever on networking events or in people's houses it's like. Yeah, at the end of the day, I pick up trash for a living, right? If I, it, it, right, I can look at it like that, or I can reshape the entire story in a language, right? I get the opportunity to go into people's homes and businesses and find new homes for items they no longer need. Well, yeah. that's a different fucking attitude, right? <clears throat> and when I go into it with that attitude, it's like, wow, what a fucking blessing. What a great opportunity I have to impact my community and the world around me. And so you're right. When, when it's these guys that go online and they're like, oh, I'm just going to, Try to make my money fast. I'm gonna to try to pick up shit loads. I'm gonna undercut everybody else. It's like, hey man, you're, you know, get what you get what you put in this world, and it's whatever the home building. If you want to slap them up and you got a fixed price and these are the three homes you build and fucking pick your color, okay, there's a there's a market for that. As soon as you say, hey, we're the best in the business, back it up. Camel Crew Junk Room, we got a thousand reviews with a perfect five star rating. Our guys show up. They're uniform. Our trucks are fucking wrapped. We got the right equipment. We got the insurance so we can take on the commercial jobs that nobody else wants. Actually, I, I do want to talk about this fucking safe job I did last week. Fucking pulled out, uh, dude, money ass fucking scrap job. I fucking love scrap jobs. Anyway, we have the opportunity to do that. 
because we continually represent ourselves well and push ourselves. It's like we love hauling material every day versus, oh, I just pick up trash or, hey, I'm going to try to make a buck. Right. If your only goal in, in business is trying to get rich quick, you're, you're in the wrong business. Right. Entrepreneurship is about being in love with what you do. What would you ask there, Easton? I I should have should have known. I just asked if you're a veteran, and oh, yeah. I would say 20, you know, I, I hit I hit 20 years next month. 20. That's awesome. Good so, years. No big deal. I shaved. I shaved. Well, you said I, you I, I ain't fucking years. push paper. Let me tell you something, Casey. Let me tell you something. I fucking I drove the truck. I was in the rear with the gear. Okay, I drove the big trucks. So that guys like you can, you know, pull the trigger. And then, and then I spent a year down in Guantanamo, Gitmo. I was going to say Guantanamo Bay, Cuba. Gitmo. Prisoners. I was I'm not being, I was, I was utilizing my IPC skills to gain compliance, care, custody, and control of the gentleman that lived down there. Uh, <laughs> pissing on prisoners. God. See, I'll tell you this. This, way, this is why we have classes. This is literally why. Like I, I went to a two week school to learn how to not be an asshole. Yeah. I, I became a detentions and corrections specialist to basically teach teach fellow soldiers <laughs> to treat people humanely, right? Like, <laughs> so yeah, just, I would say this: it. never having never having served, and obviously not everybody in the trash business is a veteran. But yeah. I think it's a great business to hire veterans, and I also oh, yeah. think as I'm sitting here dying laughing at peeing on prisoners. There's a want for at least the construction community and uh, <laughs> to, you know, we don't know what can be said and whatnot. We don't want to offend anybody, right? Like hearing y'all talk and, and being able to say that and, and inserting, you know, your your builder client or your, you know, you got to oh, first of all, feel out the room, but with the right audience, that's first of all, shit. Like if, I remember people get, on prisoners for like a week now. Yeah. Here's the thing. First of all, People choose to be offended. It ain't my fucking deal, right? I can say the same fucking joke to two people, and one thinks I'm awesome and wants to hire me to do 15 minutes at the bar mitzvah. The other one are fucking offended and want to go you know, keyboard wire that ass. <laughs> right? There we go. We're going to have a lot of titles for this episode. Uh, uh, so, first of all, I, b- people are offended. It's got, that's an individual yeah. effort, right? They can choose to be offended. Second thing is, <clears throat> yeah, in our veteran groups, it's like you'll see the memes where it's like you don't realize your dark sense of humor until you start telling the military stories, civilians, and they're not laughing. And the yeah. veterans in the room are like, "That's fucking funny. That's some good shit." Um, That's hilarious. Yeah, I mean, like, like I uh, one of my one of my go to stories that my buddy Brad Herder reminds me of. <clears throat> we're sitting there. I'm with like I don't know five seven people at a networking event, and I talk about the night my dick almost got blown off, and like that's the name of the story. And then, um, yeah. Welcome to the trash yeah, talk. Yeah, like, like, like this. The, the the name of the story and the punchline is the story, and basically, it's like, yeah, my dick almost got blown off, and then it, and then it didn't, right? The, 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 the you know, the at the end of the day, like, I mean, you may not know that, right? Um, so yeah, the veterans, um, we say what's in our mind. That's it. Here's the beautiful thing about being a veteran and being in the military. Uh, they take 40, 50, 60 dudes, they put them in a fucking barracks from all over the country, all over skin tones shit none of them all speak english right mm-hmm. and they're like hey mm-hmm. motherfuckers you got nine weeks to not kill each other you got nine weeks to get along while people are screaming at you the whole time and make you feel like a jackass and make you feel about yay big and you know what i got in a few dust-ups with a few folks because turned out you know i'm a, a white kid from the suburbs you know grew up in the north and well we had to make we had to make heads and tails of it and the beautiful thing at the end of the day right you're either dark green or you're light green your political aspirations don't fucking matter. So if you got something to say, it gets said. And if someone's offended, that's a fucking them problem. And then we move on. And you get real, you don't have to get, I wouldn't even say get hard. You get, you get uh, desensitized. I don't know what the word, the word yeah, is. Desensitized. You get more norm, normalization. Of, because... You get normalization that like, yeah, there, there's, there's, you know, get the fuck well, over that's it. The thing who, is, who the fuck are you? You know, I think a, a big part of why we did really good, honestly, was the realism. I mean, well, yeah, I put on, I wouldn't say a show, but I knew how to act professional when I needed to. But at the same yeah. time, I could read the room. And when the room started to lax, get a little lax, then it's okay, I can let my hair down as well. And, you know, what's funny is there's, I'm bringing this up because I know you remember this. There was a job, <clears throat> it's all shady, shady lane. Okay. 
I went out there to check on my crew and I took my truck, which at the time was the three quarter ton King Ranch. And he's like, hey, man, don't go around back. It's pretty sloppy out there from the rain. I was like, okay. So what I do, I go went around back. the house and I got stuck. Like, dude, I'm talking axles stuck. The thing, you, you couldn't even see the wheels. It was down. That 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 30 minute detour just to check on my guys turned into a 10 hour event. I had two of my own, my other trucks that were also diesel four by fours, couldn't get me out. The skid steer kept getting slid in to the tree, so it couldn't get me out. I broke one tow truck's winch. So finally they had to get like a big mom out there to pull me out late late that night. But the whole time he was just laughing, even though I rutted it, I rutted up that property like a motherfucker. I got so stuck, but he was laughing because he's like, dude, this shit happens. Like it sucks. And that's all you mm -hmm. can really do. And I already knew that because the military, you know that, Andy. Really? Like the worst times are the funniest because that's when you remember, hey, remember that time it was so shitty, but we still had fun somehow. We still made the you know light of it. Yeah. It was funny because it was somebody else. If it was me, yeah. I would have been pissed. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I got oh yeah, yeah. It's it's funny. It, well, that's the thing. You don't remember the fucking jobs that went right. You know, no. one of my mentors, I've talked about in this podcast before, and I'll say it again. One of my mentors, um, Carl Monkwitz, he said my first, like, first time I ever sat down with a realtor, I was like, I don't know how to fucking business. And I was like, teach me shit, Carl. And he said, whatever you do, do not forget that these are the good old days. Mm -hmm. And that stuck with me now, right? And so I tell my guys now when we're having a shit day, <clears throat> actually, I'll tell the story about the safe from last week. When we're having, a, a, when it's a real mother of a day, right? All of a sudden... We'll just sit there and say, hey, you know what? We're going to laugh about this later. So the sooner we can laugh about it now, the better off we're going to be. And then we just, we, you know, pitter patter, let's get at her. So last week we had this, uh, this job pulling eight, eight safes out of uh, a bank. And they're all, um, what do you call it? Security, but we're not security boxes. What are the, what are the, what are the boxes? Yeah, they're not deposit boxes. What do you when you put your uh, long like your uh, safety deposit boxes? Is that what you said? Yeah, whatever. yeah safety deposit box boxes. Anyways, uh, eight safes, total of fourteen thousand pounds. So do the fucking math, right? A couple of these things, and they were different sizes. So a couple of these jokers wait a little bit, and we had a plan in going into it, and then one of our guys bailed out on us, and so I had called my dad and was like, "Hey, what are you doing?" I had called him a day before, like, "Hey, what are you doing tomorrow?" He's like, I got nothing I have to do. I was like, you want to help us pull eight safes out of a bank? He's like, yeah, let's do it. Got there. It was a mother, right? Of course they're heavier. Of course, right? The, 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 the safe moving company was going to drop them. They didn't. And it's like, those guys, and I didn't go to the job at all. I saw pictures. I trusted them. Man, they're, they're going to have stories for years about how heavy the safes were and the job that got done and the way it was intricate. It's like, Let's take that shit, right? A day, a day they could have gone to shit. It's where uh, I talk about in my book, right? Uh, Dr. Mihai Ceausescu, who's a Hungarian philosopher mm -hmm. and psychologist, talks about when the challenge is great and your skill level is great, that's when you're in the flow, right? And mm -hmm. when you're in business, like you said, like, like, yeah, when your truck is stuck or you got that safe or you get to a fucking house and it's got to be done and all of a sudden, you know, it's trash because the tenants left and they're closing the next day. It's like, dude, you got a choice. You can either follow the fucking fits because you ain't got the fucking skill or you rise to the occasion. And that's the good stuff. That's the flow. That's the difference between those that will make it and not. There's a reason why 80% of businesses don't make it 10 years because they choose not to take on those challenges. They choose not to enhance their skill sets to get themselves in that flow. They sit in the fucking comfort zone. Or they 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 don't enhance their skill set and then their fucking competition chews them up. Or they think they fucking know everything and this is the way we've always done it and their skill sets actually diminish by not keeping up with the times. Right? The opportunity that we have as business owners is to go out every day and increase our skill sets so that we become lucky, right? We know that luck is a preparation or is the intersection of preparation and opportunity. Opportunity is a challenge that come across our desk. It's our obligation to be prepared. And so when we talk about your business, right, you talked about it like, yeah, you've already gone through this shit. So you can sit back and laugh and joke when somebody else fails because you've already done it yourself. You're not going to throw a fucking fit because you're already prepared to say, yep, that shit happens. I've been there. I've done that. And that's the opportunity we have as business owners is to how do we handle, right, we talked about earlier, right, how do we lean into what business we're in, the transparency, the honesty, the integrity. It's like, hey, if you build house, you build house, you haul trash, you haul trash. 
Do it with the confidence that you've done that before. Don't act like it's your first fucking time. No, man. <clears throat> no, be the best. And you know what? Be the best at what you do. Uh, you don't have to like it all the time, but be the best at it. And, you know, that's one thing. Make us, the name Make Us is such a, a go to, it really is a household name around the Grapevine South Lake Hollywood area. I mean, nine times out of 10, you walk, you meet someone, you're like, hey, you know, you know, Make Us. Oh, yeah, I know Make Us very well. And it's because of the the value they bring to their business, but at the same time, the transparency. I mean, he also gave me my first big demo and it was overpriced and he paid it. But he also said no on another big demo because it was overpriced. Yep. And there was no love loss, right? Like, hey, got it, cool. <clears throat> but at the same time, he also went to bat for me when I got my first, what, my biggest job ever with Hillwood. I needed a video um, testimony from someone who's done something similar. And I asked him to do it. He did it for me. And that's one thing they required. We want to talk to someone who has used you for a big project like this. And he did it. Yeah. So these, these connections you're making now early on in the business, whether you're one truck shop or not, they matter, man. I mean, before he has to go, I was going to tell you, I don't even think he knows this, but he averaged out every year we did business with him. He averaged $68,000 a year with us. Average. Hmm. Just one person. Yeah. So one company. you think about that, you know, that's a lot of business from one person. But to him, it was a mutual relationship and we both did business together. So and, and it was it, it, great. It was a, it, it was it was a win win. Yeah. Right. So I do know I knew we, we have a hard stop coming up here. No, uh, I'm, I'm good. Y'all I've got I've got a little bit of time, so I don't okay. want y'all to leave anything unanswered. So um, I can be a smidge late. I shouldn't even have said anything. Oh no worries. All right, I always want to be respectful. Uh, uh, what questions do you have, Andy? Uh, no, you can't remember. We've talked about him. Actually, was that actually that time I came down there? We went to that bomb ass house. Was that one of his ones, or was that another? No, that was uh, Simmons and Paul Hollow. <coughs> yep, it was a three story, like twenty seven thousand square foot house. Dude, I showed him. My, dude, that was a ridiculous house. We walked around this house and it was like, just the, the, the shell of the house was nicer than my house. Uh, yeah, it was stupid. I think awesome. he cut it like what ten. 11,000? No, I mean, we, we do everything. Big ones. Yeah, we do everything. Um, you know, we've got some townhomes over here by the airport that are 2,000 square feet. And, and that's kind of what we've done. Um, do you guys do, do you guys build our, uh, MURs? Uh, multi-unit residentials? Do you guys build like multi-unit residentials? We have... We have, I would say, the closest thing to multifamily going right now that we've ever had. Um, we've explored multifamily, you know, yeah. attached townhomes in the past. Typically, we excel in that single family. So even if it's no. the size of a condo or a townhome or an apartment, um, our business has always been single family. That's Got what it. we excel at, even though it costs a little bit more. Um, typically, that's what the cities around our areas or the cities that we, we work in um, would likely approve rather than multifamily in this Northeast Tarrant County region. And I believe as it fills out, there will be, um, an acceptance of that. Mm -hmm. But, um, in these areas that we're talking about, there's not really an acceptance of that later and getting, getting the message across that density and, and, uh, small homes or smaller lots doesn't equate to quality. You know, and I and I think yeah. our cities have done around this area have done a good job, um, you know, regulating that. Um, well, because those those smaller units you're building, they have bomb ass interiors. I mean, he doesn't he, they don't change the quality regardless of the size of the house. That's the one thing I can tell no. you. And, yeah. you know, like the townhomes he built. <clears throat> so here's something interesting. They was it four years ago when you when you did the uh, the forty house or the yep. forty acres? That was uh, we finished the last one about a year ago. The 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 forty four homes in Shady Brook. Yeah, Shady Brook, like that neighborhood. Yeah. So <laughs> a couple years ago, they decided to to kind of go right instead of left or go the different direction, and they built forty four homes, uh, very limited options as far as the uh, the elevations go, but two, two single stories and two two stories. Yeah, and it was all the same material and where it was a home run for him, it was all the same material. So that means yep. from each house to the other, you're not having to do a bunch of change orders or having to go and find this stone or this, there's actually no brick or stone on any of those houses. Right. It increased the, 
the the workflow from and, I, and my mason's one of my good friends mm -hmm. but we were we were able to build the houses faster and also if you remember what was four and five years ago that was COVID supply chain shortages building material shortage shortages mm -hmm. so during that window now i can't honestly say that we had COVID in mind when we were planning for that <laughs> but it did help when we had COVID hit then we had another one or two pocket communities mm -hmm. during that time that we pivoted limited our exterior materials our interior materials simplified it down but really we can do a uh, a townhome type product all the way up to westlake which is the nicest area considered probably one of the nicest areas up here in the mm -hmm. dfw dfw metroplex that's where you were Andy. and so we yeah you know we we can do it do it all and that's what our family's done um for decades is you know, if somebody's got X amount of budget and they need to be at eight hundred thousand dollars, which I would say was five hundred thousand dollars ten years ago, right? Or mm -hmm. somebody that, hey, you know, we we want to build an eight thousand square foot house on two acres or five acres. You oh. know, we we can do both of those projects just as efficiently. So eight 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 thousand square foot house on two acres, that's a big ass house, Jack. I guess oh, that's man. probably normal about you guys. Like we don't like here in Wisconsin. Like you don't you, rarely do you see houses that big, and that, down there, no, it's a completely different landscape, man. It's, I know. It's, yeah, it's a hundred. Especially this area is a very affluent area. I mean, you got this whole, yeah. you know, Ross Pro Jr. I don't know if you remember Ross Pro. He ran for president way back when. Yeah, I know he fucked up George Bush. No big deal. Yeah. So like, his damn, son, three percent, has, has continued his legacy and built this empire over here in the Northeast Tarrant County area. Yeah. And a lot of that land is just being developed now. You wouldn't recognize it if you were here ten years ago, but it brought the money, it brought the economy, and this area. You know, you it's a very. I would say it's a very. Well, you know, Andy, this is what my business was built on. You have middle class all the way up to upper class in the same five mile radius. Yeah. I, I can go to a house that is 30 40 years old and then i can go right next door to a brand new you know mcmansion and the yeah, cool you have, thing you have, is, yeah you have decent de uh, population density even with the yeah. fuck-off houses oh exactly and that's the thing is now i don't even know the population of the same area it's probably shit 550 550 000. um yep. and it's just growing every day but you know it, it's one of those things the, the custom builders um are they the most profitable for a junk removal? Absolutely not. Because nope. for the most part, you're going to the landfill. I would say 90% of your trips, you're going to the landfill. Not really much you can recycle, donate, or, or, or even reuse. But, uh, you know, it, it's a relationship that will help you during the times. There was times where he would call me. Hey, man, I know you're probably slow. If you want, you can go hit a couple houses and just yep. bill me the $150 or whatever. Because he was looking out for us because he understood, hey, I, I hate the season. It sucks for everyone. And then vice versa. So those relationships really matter. Andy, well, you, and you, you, you need a consistent one. Oh, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh. Well, it's simple. But from a trash company, you know, our the trash company that's currently doing our stuff is they've got a little logo on the side. But act, actually, after going to your website, I think that that camo crew or, you know, at the time, the, the other camo trucks that Casey had, I I, you know, some sort of reckon, um, if you're doing the custom side, you go into a community yeah. and there's others, you know, whatever it may be, whether it's red, orange, green, purple, polka dot, camo, mm -hmm. you know, that, do, that does help. And don't be scared as a trash person to, you know, have, have some of those business cards that you mentioned and go introduce yourself to what looks like the PM on the job site or the uh, superintendent on the job site or swing back through that neighborhood if you didn't see him one time and give your uh, guys that are doing that and incentivize them and say, Hey, if this guy, if this guy calls me and he said, Hey, such and such with camo crew gave me your card, you know, give him a little stiff, you know, extra 50 bucks or hundred bucks or something like that. I, I think that that helps too. And I, I know this is mainly focused on new construction, but yeah, I think you'll, you'll get exposure to a, a lot of good people, even if it's not the biggest, uh, biggest margins uh from the trash side but i think like well, the case he, was saying to be steady and you, you know. saw me every he didn't just see me on the streets he saw me on facebook he saw me at meetings chamber events he saw everything I, I was putting out there so where if he missed it then you know what someone else is going to see me because i was in all places at all times and that's the thing you have to do with your business i mean hell you have a slow day put your guys out on the street market 
you know, yep. bandit signs, door hangers, go to a chamber event, whatever. Um, that's one thing he even, you know, he told me he, he had to get better at. Yeah, I got to be more, I got to get back into the communities better. And he did. I mean, hell, he was president of the Builders Association for a while, weren't you? Like a year or two? Uh, Fort Worth Builders Association? Yes. Yeah. And that's, that's a, so it's literally a club for freaking builders. And he was like, hey, you should join. Yeah. As a, as a trash company, like exactly what Casey's saying, like some of these trade organizations, whether, up up north there's a, a builders association mm -hmm. or and i would even call you know you may not have to join for whatever it costs and say hey you know we're in the suburbs of this area or a chamber of commerce whatever areas you're trying to target mm -hmm. look at those civic or trade organizations that are there i know if you have never had exposure to that that's intimidating but they're regular people just like us mm -hmm. all you got to do is have that good attitude go in there and whether it's new construction or the gentleman that I ate lunch with that had a hot tub on his back patio and now he's elderly with his wife and they had to saws on into four pieces, mm -hmm. you know, whatever it is, you're going to have exposure because y'all's business really, the, the trash business is for everybody, right? New construction, yeah. remodels, um, Mr. and Mrs. Homeowner that's lived in their house for 30 years. It doesn't matter. Yeah, no, absolutely. And that's, and that's a good thing for us to remember what you said. Actually, I'll use that. Uh, we'll go around the horn here with top takeaways. I'll, I'll start with mine is um, <clears throat> what you just said, right? When it comes to other business owners and your clients and your customers, they're all people, right? We may haul junk for a living. And that, you know, that's something that when you're proud of, you can walk into those civic organizations, chambers. Uh, I've been part of Builders Association for years, right? When I walk in, I'm normally one of the only junk removal companies. I'm, I'm the go-to because I'm the only option. And I walk in proud. I wear my camo pants. Um you know, I, I, I make things happen because I choose to make things happen. And, it, and it's a choice. Right. And you got to check yourself at the door and make sure you got your shit right. And, you know, and, and, and you're proud of who you are and what confidence you have. And then you'll swing through the pitch. Let's go to you, Casey. And then we'll finish with you, Easton. What's your top takeaway today here, Casey? Top takeaways, you know, it's kind of a two part thing. The first part is don't be intimidated by your tactics of marketing. You yep. know, be a little creative, be a little risky i mean I, I literally put a sign on a, on a, a mound of trash and when i would go by there and it was gone i'd replace it so i knew it was getting taken down but i still did it because worst case scenario if he doesn't call me and i burn four dollars uh, uh every so often but best case scenario you, you know you get a customer that uses you year over year um yeah. and then my other takeaway is relationships man you know i i, I don't have numbers in front of me but i, I guarantee if i went through all of my numbers i could tell you so many relationships that were stemmed from just this one, who he yep. referred or one of his clients just moved into a house that he built and they have shit in their other house that they're trying to get out of it, it it's all the same kind of people if you think about it and if you're good at what you do then they're going to keep referring you to other people because they want you to succeed people don't understand this genuinely business owners want other business owners to succeed they may not always be able to help you succeed personally, but they want to see you succeed. So just put yourself out there and make those relationships. That's that's one of my biggest takeaways. Well, not only do they want, they need you to succeed, right? Yeah. They need to have a reliable company that's going to clean out the buildings. They need a reliable company they can refer to other people, right? When when one business fails, right, a lot of businesses fail. Mm -hmm. Ethan, what's your uh, top takeaway from today's show? My top takeaway is pretty simple, and it's what I mentioned earlier in the show. You know, Kathy and I's relationship was spawned off that sign and that mountain of trash, right? But meeting you for the first time, Andy, and, you know, seeing kind of how you and Casey interact, just as simple as I can say, whatever trash company you are, whatever your expertise is, or if it's everything, walk up with a smile. And if that's not you, if that's not you, if that's your wife, your spouse, mm -hmm. a worker, you don't need to go out and hire a salesperson. But make that extra effort. And that extra effort is just purely being kind. I'm not trying to be cheesy. Just nope. say, hey, even if you have a lost leader or two of a job, give me a shot. I will clean this house at our cost or my guys cost X amount an hour and be honest with these people and be kind and get your foot in the door. That's on the new construction. Mm -hmm. Obviously, I don't have a lot of great tactics for the other aspects of y'all's business. But on new construction, you would be shocked. I think you would get... A, a much much higher than a 50 percent success rate if you just went with a good attitude mm -hmm. that mba that mop bucket attitude mm -hmm. and um we're willing to just say hey 
I, I would love to get my foot in the door with your new construction business and just give me a shot. And it all comes down to that attitude and, and the, and the communication, which I know communication is hard, but that's, yeah. that's it. It's really not that complicated and that's trash building development mm -hmm. in retail. It doesn't matter. The, the attitude is everything. Well, one of the things I, I brought up, um, I, I taught, I was teaching a class a couple of weeks back at Carroll uh, University here in Milwaukee. Uh, and I, I came up with the equation for what is entrepreneurship. Entrepreneurship is what are, what are you willing to do for free that someone's willing to pay you for? And when you're first starting off in business, you hit the nail on the head, right? <clears throat> Go up to that contractor and say, I'm willing to do this at no cost or at cost to show you what we're capable of. Worst case, he says no when you're out the hour, two hours, whatever time, and a little bit of disposal. Best case is you make a, a relationship for life. Like Casey said, a couple four-hour investments on a trash pile led to seventy thousand dollars in you know annual reoccurring revenue, and that's the key. As business owners, it's our opportunity to go out there and take the risks. You know, that's when you know that that's the opportunity we have, right? And going to those risks with the confidence that you're going to be successful. So whether that's placing a yard sign or you know, walking in and being willing to do something at cost or for free or walking into a networking event and saying, I got this, right? And having mm -hmm. that attitude, that's what's going to separate. When you have confidence, confidence is contagious. So this episode and all of these episodes, this is our weekly opportunity to get the knowledge and education so that we improve our skill set so we are ready to take on the challenges and which will ultimately give us the flow in life and in business that we're looking for. We'll wrap up. Casey, Easton, any last final words for our listeners? Go out there and make some money. Make some money. Numbers matter. I'm Andy Wines. He's Casey Bubba Lawrence, and thank you to our guest, Easton. This has been another amazing week here in the Trash Talk Business Podcast. We will see you next week. Thanks for listening. Tap subscribe or follow to get the latest episode. And if you enjoyed this episode, be sure to leave us a review and tell a friend to listen. To learn more, visit trash